CNN is able to tell you now that NBA star Kobe Bryant was on board that helicopter and is now dead at the age of 41. Lives cut short in their prime, stars that never shine. The death of an NBA star is a pain many will carry for years to come. In today's video, we will be exploring the life and tragic death of former NBA players who were killed in real life, from their rise to basketball stardom to the shocking circumstances surrounding their deaths. Lawrence and Wright. Lawrence and Vern Gagne Wright was an American professional basketball player who played for 13 seasons in the NBA. He was born on November 4, 1975 in Oxford, Mississippi. From a young age, it was clear that he had a natural talent for basketball. His towering height of 6 feet 11 inches combined with his agility and skill made him a force to be reckoned with on the court. During his time at the University of Memphis from 1994 to 1996, Lawrence made a significant impact on the college basketball scene. His athleticism, versatility, and ability to dominate both ends of the court quickly made him a standout player. Lawrence's success on the college level caught the attention of NBA scouts, and he decided to forego his remaining college eligibility to enter the 1996 NBA draft. With his impressive college resume and undeniable talent, it came as no surprise when he was selected as the seventh overall pick by the Los Angeles Clippers. Over the course of his NBA career, Lawrence played for several teams, including the Los Angeles Clippers, Atlanta Hawks, Memphis Grizzlies, Sacramento Kings, and Cleveland Cavs. Cavaliers. He continued to impress with his skills and work ethic, earning the respect of teammates, coaches, and fans alike. Tragedy struck on July 18, 2010. Wright departed from his residence in Collierville, Tennessee, and vanished without a trace. Concerned by his absence, his family reported him missing on July 22, 2010. Tragically, Wright's lifeless body was discovered six days later in a wooded area off Callis Cutoff Road, situated west of Hacks Cross Road. After thorough investigation, it was discovered that Lorenzen was brutally shot by his ex-wife, Shara Wright. Robinson over how she spent the $1 million of insurance money meant to benefit their six children. She was sentenced to 30 years in prison on July 25, 2019, putting an end to this heartbreaking story. Bison Delay Born on April 6, 1969 in Fresno, California, Bison Delay was a talented basketball player who played center for the NBA's Orlando Magic, Denver Nuggets, Los Angeles Clippers, Chicago Bulls, and Detroit Pistons. Bison Dell, originally named Brian Carson Williams, was born on April 6, 1969 in Fresno, California. From a young age, it was clear that Bison possessed a natural talent for basketball. His parents, Patricia Phillips and Eugene Gino Williams Jr., recognized his potential and nurtured his passion for the sport. Growing up, Bison faced both personal and familial challenges. His parents divorced and his mother remarried raising Bison and his older brother in Fresno. Despite the difficulties, Bison's determination and love for the game never wavered. Standing at an impressive 6 feet 11 inches tall, Bison's height gave him a significant advantage over his opponents. He dominated the game with his exceptional skills, averaging an astonishing 17.3 points, 12.7 rebounds, 2.1 assists, 2.5 steals, and 9.1 blocks per game during his senior season. Shooting an impressive 57.7% from the field, Bison's talent was undeniable. Bison Bison's skills caught the attention of college recruiters from across the country. He initially chose to play for the University of Maryland, where he showcased his abilities on the court. However, after one year, Bison made the decision to transfer to the University of Arizona, seeking a new opportunity to further develop his game. After two successful seasons at Arizona, Bison Dell made the life-changing decision to enter the 1991 NBA Draft. He caught the attention of the Orlando Magic, who selected him as the 10th overall pick in the first round. He eventually played with several other NBA teams having a successful career. However, Bison's story took a dark turn with his mysterious disappearance at sea. The circumstances surrounding his death, along with the tragic loss of his girlfriend Serena Carlin and skipper Bertram Saldo, remain shrouded in uncertainty. George Trapp George Trapp played for Monrovia High School, located in Monrovia, California. It was during this time that he contributed to the Wildcats' first CIF basketball championship, leaving a lasting mark on the school's basketball legacy. Following his successful high school career, Trapp continued his basketball journey at Pasadena City College, PCC. He transferred to PCC after completing his freshman year and quickly became a force to be reckoned with on the court. Trapp's exceptional skills and leadership qualities helped lead the team to a state community college title, solidifying his reputation as a rival 
rising star in the basketball world. In 1971, Trapp's senior year, he led Long Beach State to the Elite Eight of the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Tournament. The team's remarkable run captivated fans and showcased Trapp's ability to perform under pressure. Although they fell short in a close match against UCLA, the eventual tournament winner, Trapp's contributions to the team's success were undeniable. In 1971, when he was selected by the Atlanta Hawks as the fifth overall pick in the NBA draft, Trapp's first two seasons in the NBA were spent with the Atlanta Hawks, where he showcased his skills as a versatile power forward center. Known for his outside shooting and electrifying drives to the hoop, Trapp quickly became a fan favorite. In his second year with the Hawks, he had his best scoring season, averaging 11.3 points per game and 5.9 rebounds per game in 24.1 minutes per game. Trapp's contributions off the bench were instrumental in the team's success during the 1972-73 season. Tragically, George Trapp's life was cut short by a shocking event that shook the basketball world. On January 9, 2002, he was involved in a fight with a roommate in Detroit, resulting in a fatal stabbing. The news of his untimely death sent shockwaves through the basketball community, leaving fans and fellow players devastated. Jack Molinas Jack Molinas, born on October 31, 1931, a student at Stuyvesant High School. Molinas' natural talent and dedication to basketball caught the attention of college recruiters, paving the way for his future success. In 1950, Molinas embarked on his college journey at Columbia University. It was here that he would leave an indelible mark on the basketball program. Throughout his college career, Molinas showcased his exceptional skills as a small forward and power forward, captivating audiences with his athleticism and scoring prowess. During the 1952 to 1950 season, Molinas emerged as a true leader, earning the captaincy of Columbia's basketball team. His ability to dominate the court was unparalleled, and he consistently led the team in scoring, becoming a force to be reckoned with. In 1953, the Fort Wayne Pistons selected Molinas as the third overall pick in the NBA draft. This was a significant milestone in his career, as he had the opportunity to showcase his talents on the grand stage of professional basketball. The NBA held high hopes for Molinas, expecting him to become a key contributor to the league. Tragically, on August 3rd, 1975. At the age of 43, Molinas met his tragic end while standing in the backyard of his Los Angeles home. Eugene Connor fired five shots, including one to the head, from the yard of Molinas's neighbor, using a long-barreled .22 caliber pistol steadied on the fence. Molinas suffered a fatal gunshot wound to the neck. Gary Souter Gary Souter, a towering figure at 6 feet 9 inches, was born on January 18, 1944, in Omaha, Nebraska. He rose to prominence as a talented basketball player, showcasing his skills as a center and power forward at Sandia High School in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Despite his promising future, Souter's life was plagued by disciplinary issues, leading to his dismissal from the University of New Mexico's basketball team. Undeterred, Souter continued his basketball journey at Midwestern State University, where he excelled on the court, averaging a double-double in both his junior and senior years. Despite his impressive college career, Souter went undrafted in the NBA, but his determination led him to a brief stint with the Cleveland Cavaliers. He also played for the Philadelphia 76ers, where he was cut after making the team a month before. However, it was Souter's personal life that took a dark turn. He developed a reputation as a gambler, hustling at pool halls and facing the consequences of his addiction. Tragically, Souter's life came to a violent end in 1982 when he was murdered over an alleged money debt. Bryce DeJohn Jones. Bryce DeJohn Jones' basketball journey began in the vibrant city of Los Angeles, California. He attended View Park Preparatory High School for two years before transferring to William Howard Taft Charter High School in the Woodland Hills section of Los Angeles. It was at Taft High School where DeJohn Jones truly made a name for himself. As a senior in the 2009 to 2010 season, DeJohn Jones showcased his skills and leadership on the court, averaging an impressive 16.9 points, 7.5 rebounds, 1.9 assists, and 1.6 steals per game. He played a pivotal role in leading the Taft Torridors to the LA City section final and the third round of the Division I state playoffs. His shooting prowess was particularly noteworthy as he made an astounding 56.8% of his shots, including an impressive 49.3% from beyond the arc. Dejon Jones's high school career not only showcased his basketball skills but also demonstrated his ability to lead and make a positive impact on his team. He was not only a star player but also a role model for his teammates, setting an 
example of hard work, determination, and sportsmanship. After an outstanding high school career, Bryce Dejean Jones embarked on his college journey, seeking new challenges and opportunities to showcase his skills on a bigger stage. He began his college career at the University of Southern California, USC, where he made an immediate impact. As a freshman at USC, Dejean Jones appeared in 18 of 34 games, starting in each of the Trojans' first 10 games. Dejon Jones had several standout performances, including a career-high 21 points against New Mexico State. He also played with University of Nevada, Las Vegas, UNLV, and Iowa State University at the collegiate level. He also played with Idaho Stampede and New Orleans Pelicans at the professional level. On February 4th, Dejon Jones had a career-best game, recording 17 points and 9 rebounds in a close 99-96 loss to the Los Angeles Lakers. It seemed that his dreams of a successful NBA career were finally coming true. However, tragedy struck just a week later. On May 28, 2016, Bryce Dejon Jones's life was tragically cut short. In the early hours of the morning, he mistakenly broke into an apartment believing it to be that of his girlfriend. The resident, fearing for his safety, fired a handgun in self-defense, fatally striking Dejon Jones in the abdomen. Drazen Petrovic. Born on October 22, 1964, in Sibenik, Croatia, Drazen Petrovic quickly made a name for himself as a rising star in the basketball world. At a young age, Petrovic joined the youth team of Sibenka, a local club, where he honed his skills and showcased his natural talent. In 1983, Petrovic made the move to Sibona Zagreb, marking the beginning of a remarkable chapter in his basketball career. He quickly became a key player for the team, leading them to multiple victories and championships. Petrovic's scoring ability was unmatched, and he soon gained a reputation as a prolific shooter. During his time at Sibona Zagreb, Petrovic's skills and performances continued to impress. He played a crucial role in the team's success, helping them secure three consecutive Yugoslav League titles from 1984 to 1986. Petrovic's scoring prowess and competitive spirit made him a force to be reckoned with on the court. Drazen Petrovic's remarkable talent and unwavering dedication propelled him to achieve unparalleled success, including two EuroLeague championships and the prestigious title of FIBA World Championship MVP in 1986. Drazen Petrovic's journey to basketball greatness began in his early life, where he displayed an exceptional passion and talent for the sport. His dedication and hard work paid off, catching the attention of scouts from Sibona Zagreb, one of the top basketball teams in Yugoslavia. Shortly after receiving offers of three-year contracts valued at $7.5 million net, Petrovic tragically lost his life in a traffic accident around 5.20 p.m. on June 7, 1993. While traveling on the rain-soaked Autobahn 9, he was a passenger in a vehicle that was abruptly cut off by a semi-truck at Denkendorf near Ingolstadt in the German state of Bavaria. Joe Folks Joe Folks, the legendary basketball player known as Jumping Joe, was born in Birmingham on October 26, 1921. On a farm, he improvised, using a tin can or a stuffed sock to practice his skills. Folks began his high school career at Birmingham High School, where he quickly established himself as a star player. His athleticism, scoring ability, and passion for the game set him apart from his peers. Folks became a local sensation, captivating audiences with his electrifying performances on the court. Following his junior season, Folks and his family made a significant move to Cudahua, Kentucky, where Folks' performances drew the attention of college scouts, who recognized his potential and sought to recruit him. After completing his high school education, Folks took his talents to Murray State University, then known as Murray State Teachers College. He played college basketball for two years before his education was interrupted by World War II. In May 1942, Folks joined the Marines and served with the 3rd Battalion, 9th Marines, during the war. He served and was discharged as a corporal in May 1946. Despite his military service, Folks went on to become a successful basketball player with the Philadelphia Warriors. Folks became the league's record holder for most points scored in a single game when he scored 37 points. Sadly, Folks was shot and killed on March 21, 1976 by his girlfriend's son during an argument over a handgun. Howard Porter Born on August 31, 1948, in Stewart, Florida, Howard Porter's basketball talent became evident early on. He played varsity basketball in the eighth grade and led Booker High School to a state championship in 1967. Porter's college career at Villanova University was nothing short of stellar. He was a three-time All-America selection and led the team to the 1971 NCAA championship game. Although they lost to UCLA, Porter's performance was so outstanding that he was named the tournament's most outstanding player. However, this accolade 
was later vacated when it was discovered he had signed a professional contract during his senior year. After college, Porter was drafted by the Chicago Bulls and went on to play for the New York Knicks, Detroit Pistons, and New Jersey Nets. His best season was with Detroit, where he became a fan favorite and was known as Geezer. Unfortunately, his career was cut short by injuries and a struggle with cocaine addiction, which was prevalent in the NBA during the 1970s. Following his retirement from the NBA in 1978, Porter faced challenges but eventually turned his life around. He served time for drug possession, sought treatment, and by 1995, he was working as a probation officer in Ramsey County, Minnesota. Tragically, Howard Porter's life came to a violent end. On May 18, 2007, he disappeared and was found severely beaten in a Minneapolis alley the next day. He succumbed to his injuries on May 26, 2007, at the age of 58. The investigation into his death led to the arrest of Rashad Arthur Raleigh, who was later convicted and sentenced to life in prison for Porter's murder. Len Bias Len Bias, born and raised in the Prince George's County area in Maryland, was destined for greatness from an early age. Growing up just outside of Washington, D.C., Bias was one of four children born to James Bias Jr. and Dr. Lonise Bias. With a sister named Michelle and two brothers, Eric and James III, known as Jay, Bias had a supportive and loving family. Bias's basketball journey began at Northwestern High School in Hyattsville, Maryland, where he quickly gained recognition for his exceptional skills on the court. After graduating from high school, he enrolled at the University of Maryland, eager to continue his basketball career at the collegiate level. As a freshman for the Maryland Terrapins, Bias was initially seen as raw and undisciplined. However, he quickly developed into an All-American player, impressing both fans and scouts with his incredible leaping ability, physical stature, and ability to create plays. Bias's junior year was particularly remarkable as he led the Atlantic Coast Conference ACC in scoring and was named the ACC Player of the Year. Bias's senior season was nothing short of extraordinary. He delivered a standout performance in an overtime victory against top-ranked North Carolina, scoring 35 points, including seven crucial points in the last three minutes of regulation and four in overtime. At the end of his senior year, Bias was honored with his second ACC Player of the Year award and received recognition from two All-America teams. After an illustrious college career, Len Bias's dreams of playing in the NBA became a reality. On June 17, 1986, he was selected by the Boston Celtics as the second overall pick in the 1986 NBA Draft. With a a lucrative endorsement package worth $1.6 million just around the corner, Bias suffered a seizure due to cocaine overdose and passed away on June 19, 1986. Bias's death also had a lasting impact on drug legislation. The Anti-Drug Abuse Act of 1986, known as the Lynn Bias Law, was enacted in response to the public outcry over his untimely demise. Bubbles Hawkins in the bustling city of Detroit, Michigan, a young boy named Robert Bubbles Hawkins was destined for greatness on the basketball court. Born on June 30, 1954, Hawkins grew up in a neighborhood where the love for the game ran deep. It was here that he discovered his passion and natural talent for basketball, setting the stage for an extraordinary journey. Hawkins attended Pershing High School, a renowned institution known for producing top-tier athletes. It was within the walls of this school that Hawkins honed his skills and caught the attention of scouts across the country. In 1972, his skills were recognized on a national level when he was named a first-team Parade All-American. This prestigious honor solidified his status as one of the most promising young players in the nation, attracting the attention of college recruiters. With numerous scholarship offers on the table, Hawkins ultimately chose to take his talents to Illinois State University. From 1970 to 1975, he donned the colors of the Illinois State Redbirds, showcasing his skills at the collegiate level. Hawkins' impact on the team was immediate, as he became a key player and a force to be reckoned with on the court. He was drafted 51st overall by the Golden State Warriors in the 1975 NBA Draft. Hawkins' journey in the NBA was a roller coaster of scoring highs and personal lows. His time with the New York Nets saw him step up as a beacon of hope, averaging 19.3 points per game, and even scoring a career high. 44 points against the New Orleans Jazz on February 7, 1977. Yet, his NBA career was cut short after conflicts with his coach and brief stints with the New Jersey Nets and the Detroit Pistons. On November 28, 1993, he was found shot to death in a suspected crack house in Detroit, a city where he once shone as a high school basketball star. The case went cold with no arrests made, leaving the sports community to mourn the loss of a player whose potential was never fully realized. Reggie Harding 
From 1959 to 1961, Reggie Harding led Eastern High School to three consecutive city championships, solidifying his status as a local legend. His towering height and exceptional rebounding abilities set him apart from his peers, making him a formidable presence on the court. Considered the first player of his size in Michigan high school basketball, Reggie became a symbol of excellence and inspiration for aspiring young athletes. His ability to dominate the boards and score with ease made him a standout player in the Detroit Public School League. By his junior season, Reggie Reggie had already earned the title of the greatest high school player ever produced in Detroit's public school league. He received an astounding 135 college offers, a testament to his exceptional skills and potential. Among the many offers, Reggie had his sights set on playing for the Niagara Purple Eagles. The allure of college basketball beckoned, but fate had other plans for the young star. His grades fell short of the requirements, dashing his hopes of continuing his basketball journey at the collegiate level. Undeterred by this setback, Reggie set his sights on a different path. In the 1962 NBA draft, he made history as the first player to be drafted into the National Basketball Association NBA, without having played in college. The Detroit Pistons recognized Reggie's immense talent and selected him as the 29th overall pick, bringing him back to his hometown. The Pistons saw in him a raw talent that could be molded into greatness. While he was unable to sign with the team immediately due to eligibility technicalities, Reggie began his professional career in the Midwest Professional Basketball League MPBL, with the Toledo Tartans and Cooks Holland Oilers during the 1962 to 63 season. Reggie's time in the MPBL allowed him to further develop his skills and showcase his abilities on a professional stage. His dominance on the court caught the attention of the Pistons, who eagerly awaited his official signing for the 1963 to 64 NBA season. After almost a decade of career and personal challenges, Reggie's life was cut short when he was shot twice in the head in 1972 after an argument. Anthony Roberts. Attending Riverside High School in his hometown, Anthony Roberts quickly made a name for himself as a standout player. In 1972, Roberts led his high school team to the Tennessee State Championship, leaving a lasting impact on the basketball scene. As his senior year approached, the spotlight was firmly on Roberts, and expectations were high. Roberts' exceptional talent and leadership qualities earned him the title of MVP of the Tennessee State Championship team in 1972, solidifying his status as a rising star. As Roberts continued to excel on the court, college coaches took notice. His performances garnered interest from prestigious basketball programs across the country. Offers poured in, but Roberts had his sights set on a university that would not only nurture his basketball career, but also align with his personal values. Ultimately, Roberts made the decision to attend Oral Roberts University, ORU, from 1973 to 1977. This choice would prove to be a pivotal moment in his basketball journey. At ORU, Roberts would have the opportunity to showcase his skills on a larger stage and compete against against some of the best players in the country. During his four-year college career, Roberts became a force to be reckoned with. His scoring ability, agility, and basketball IQ set him apart from his peers. Roberts averaged an impressive 21.7 points and 7.4 rebounds per game. Roberts's incredible college career earned him recognition and accolades. He earned honorable mention All-American honors for his final three years as a Titan, solidifying his status as one of the best players in the country. Later on, Roberts would become enshrined in the ORU Athletic Hall of Fame as a member of their inaugural class. As the 21st pick in the 1977 NBA draft, Roberts showcased his skills as a small forward and shooting guard over five seasons in the league, with an impressive record of 1,658 points, 837 rebounds, and 265 assists in 213 games. Anthony Roberts lost his life during a dispute with two individuals in the parking lot of his apartment complex on March 29, 1997. Brent Allen Kilby, aged 19, faced murder charges in connection to the incident. In 1998, Kilby received a life sentence for the crime. Roberts, 41 years old at the time, tragically met his end in the altercation. Ozell Jones. From a young age, Ozell Jones displayed an innate talent and passion for the game, setting the stage for an extraordinary journey. Jones's family soon moved to Compton, California, seeking better opportunities for their son's basketball dreams. It was in Compton that Jones's love for the sport truly flourished. He attended Long Beach Polytechnic High School, where he quickly made a name for himself. As his high school career progressed, Jones caught the attention of college recruiters from across the country. Ultimately, he chose to continue his basketball journey at Wichita State University. From 
1979 to 1981, Jones donned the jersey of the Wichita State Shockers, leaving an indelible mark on the program. In the 1984 NBA draft, he was selected by the San Antonio Spurs in the fourth round as the 90th overall pick. It was a moment of triumph for Jones, a validation of his hard work and dedication to the sport he loved. However, on October 24, 1985, Jones was waived by the Spurs, altering his NBA trajectory. Undeterred, he pursued opportunities abroad, signing with Mulat Napoli in Italy. He continued his basketball journey across various professional leagues, including stints with the Los Angeles Clippers, Cincinnati Slammers, Quad City Thunder, and Tulsa Fast Breakers. With each team, Jones left an indelible mark, embodying a unique combination of size, skill, and determination, cementing his legacy in the sport. On September 7, 2006, Jones, age 45, was found shot dead in his apartment by relatives, succumbing to a single gunshot wound to the upper torso. The investigation into his death remains open. He was buried at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Long Beach, California. Sid Tannenbaum, a name to be remembered. He grew up in the vibrant Brownsville neighborhood. His journey to basketball stardom began at Thomas Jefferson High School, where he played a level beyond anything seen before. Catching the attention of college recruiters across the nation, he was admitted into NYU. It was during his time at New York University, NYU, that Sid's talent truly blossomed. Standing at six feet tall, he played as a guard forward and quickly became a force to be reckoned with. In 1947, Sid was named captain of the NYU basketball team, a testament to his leadership qualities and exceptional skills. During his college career, Sid's talent shone brightly, earning him numerous accolades and recognition. He was not only a two-time All-American, but also a two-time recipient of the prestigious Haggerty Award, which honored him as the outstanding player in the metropolitan area. Sid's remarkable achievements on the court did not go unnoticed, and he was hailed as one of the finest basketball players of his time. But Sid's success extended beyond the college arena. In 1947, he was honored with the Bar Kokhba Award, which recognized him as the best Jewish American athlete in the nation. Wilbur Wood, the esteemed sports editor of the New York Sun, once wrote of Sid in 1947, he is the finest all-around basketball performer ever to don violet livery. Sid's impact on the game was undeniable, and he left a lasting legacy at NYU as the school's all-time leading scorer with an impressive 990. 92 points. After his college career, Sid took his talents to the professional level. He was signed by the New York Knicks and later played for the Baltimore Bullets in the Basketball Association of America (BAA) from 1947 to 1949. Sid's skills translated seamlessly to the professional stage, and he continued to make his mark on the court. Throughout his professional career, Sid scored a total of 633 points in 70 games and tallied 162 assists. He owned a machine shop specializing in metal spinning and stamping in far rock away Queens, known as the Able Metal Spinning and Stamping. Tannenbaum was murdered on September 4, 1986, age 60, when he was stabbed to death by a local 37-year-old woman in his shop. Enjoyed the video? Crave more excitement? Stay tuned by clicking on any of the cards on your screen right now for more thrilling content. See you next time.